Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me today in the locker room. I'm Alan Locker. Moms, actresses, and real-life girlfriends Rebecca Gatehart, Sharon Leo, and Ivana Kopach-Wright have been good friends for over two decades. As most of you know, these three talented actresses cut their teeth early on in their careers working on a soap opera. Rebecca played Hannah Mayberry on ABC's Loving. Sharon played Dahlia Creed on Guiding Light. And Ivana, of course, played Dr. Mel Boudreaux on Guiding Light as well. We will reminisce about those days and... Um, those days and so much more. But first, these three have come together to help raise money and awareness for the Los Angeles-based Chrysalis, a nonprofit organization changing lives through jobs. Chrysalis is a nonprofit organization dedicated to creating a pathway to self-sufficiency for homeless and low-income individuals by providing the resources and support to find and retain employment. Their philosophy is that a steady job is a key step in a person's transition out of poverty and onto a pathway to self-sufficiency. Chrysalis's core employment services are designed to meet clients where they are and support them during every phase of their self-directed job search. Since 1984, Chrysalis has served more than 71,000 low-income and homeless individuals. It is my pleasure to welcome to the locker room Rebecca Gayhart, Sharon Leal, and Ivana kopach Wright. Ladies, Hi. thank you for being here. Oh, it's our complete pleasure. <laughs> yes, thanks for having us, Alan. Thank you. Well, you're so welcome. And I know Chrysalis is so excited that we're doing this and, and raising awareness for their organization. How did you, Rebecca, get first involved with them? Um, so about 22 years ago, I was at a turning point in my life and I was looking for a cause that spoke to me. Um, and I was literally just checking out all these different organizations and nonprofits. And, um, my dear friend, Brett Ratner, uh, was somewhat affiliated with Chrysalis, took me there, introduced me to them. I started doing some volunteer work. Um, and the rest is history. I've been there for 22 years, basically. Wow. And what types of things do you help them with uh, that you that you do? Um, so I started off by doing more hands on volunteering. I would do um, so our clients, you know, are trying to get jobs, basically. And, and um, so there's lots of volunteer opportunities. You can volunteer to teach a class, uh, women's support groups. Um, you can teach um, you can be a translator. We have four offices. One happens to be in Pacoima, um, Santa Monica, Skid Row. And, and so, but what I chose to do was um, my first volunteer opportunity was a mock interview with the clients, sort of helping them prepare for a job interview, which is quite scary if you've never, ever, ever done one. And it's scary if you've done thousands of them. Yeah. So <laughs> we would just sort of practice and um, I would interview them. They would interview me sort of level the playing field. And um, I would also help them fill out their resumes, answering tough questions about, you know, um, being incarcerated or never having a job before. You know, a lot of the clients um, have spent most of their life on the streets. Um, and then that sort of segued into the organization needed money to stay open to serve the clients. And so I was nominated um, without any prior experience to start a fundraising event. So I am the founder and co-chair of the Butterfly Ball, which is a fundraising event that raises money each year to keep the doors of Chrysalis open. It, well, it started in 2002 and has raised upwards of 18 million to help individuals out of poverty and homelessness. That is amazing. Thank you. Um, that's seriously. <laughs> well, and, and you know, like you're talking about event too. Is it? Yeah, it's just absolutely stunning. I mean, the who's who of everybody is there. I'm always there, like, I don't know, I'm Rebecca's guest. Oh and, my you know, front and center, I get to sit, and there's just like, you know like a ton of celebrities and, and musical guests. And she, you know, she just uses like the connections that she has and basically badgers everybody to death, like come, come, come. And it's just, it's amazing. It's amazing. Has the butterfly logo been part of Chrysalis since they were founded or? Be yeah, so uh, we, we um, 
you know, we're sitting in my living room trying to think of a name for the event. And we thought the butterfly ball sounded great. It's not a ball, actually. Um, in L.A., nothing is that dressy. Um, <laughs> so it's kind of just a formal event or casual sheet. I don't know what you would call it. But I am so thankful. I want to say this to Ivana and Sharon and all of my other friends who have supported over the years, because really it's the community that keeps Chrysalis open. Um, and yes, each year I call and ask for favors and I, I ask Ivana's husband for favors and I force Sharon to show up, even though mm -hmm. maybe there's something else she should be doing. But those calls continue year after year, you know? And I'm very, it, it, it's important work. And, you know, I'm currently looking for a job and I, you know, and it's something I've been in the workforce, you know, all my life. And it's fearful as someone who I am, you know, so I can't even imagine being, you know, somebody who's on the street looking to make that change in their life, mm -hmm. how important that help must be for them. Well, it's almost, you know, the basic things too. You can't get a job unless you have an address, a phone number, an email. Um, so those are also some of the things we provide is we help find shelter, number one, so they can complete our program and have a place to lay their head down at night. And we also give them a phone number and an email address, access to computers. We teach them how to use the computers. They do all the hard work themselves. Um, and we believe that that is why Chrysalis has a high success rate because they, the, we don't, our motto is a hand up, not a hand out. That's amazing. So for everybody watching tonight, the website is up right below, but also right on the YouTube channel, right on our show today. You'll see there's a donate button, a dollar, whatever you can. Let's help these folks. You can donate there, www. <laughs> it, it's up right on the screen, changelives.org. I think it's on there. Is it changelives.org? Yeah, it is. And it's also up on, on YouTube. There's a donate button directly that people can, can, if they watch this at any time of day, that sounds like really amazing work. Bravo. Uh, and, and to stick with it as long as you have is really impressive too. You know, people get involved in so many different things, but that's really a long time to be with an organization and, and committing yourself to it. Well, I uh, think, you know, it, it get, I get much more in return than what I give. So it's I keep going back because they keep me inspired and help me through all of my hard times as well. Oh, that's great. Well, thank you again, all of you for being here. It's so fun to have you. I love the fact that you all met at different points in your life. Sharon and Ivana were talking backstage. Can you share with the audience? Uh, I think Sharon walked into Ivana's classroom in eighth grade. <laughs> Seven, seventh. So, um, so Sharon walked into my classroom and I l took one look at her and I was like in love. I'm like, she <laughs> is going to be my best friend. <laughs> so happy. Like I, I was just like, how do I, you know, how do I make this happen? I, you know, and I'm a Capricorn. So I see my goal and I like focus <laughs> and knock it out. Right yeah. away. <laughs> yeah. So I was so happy to to see her just even who she was. There was, you know, no, no other people of color and of, you know, of African-American descent. And so I was just like, OK, she's mine. <laughs> we're, we're <back. laughs> we're <the besties. laughs> yeah. yeah. And I was saying that uh, for me, I actually had a sixth grade teacher because uh, I didn't grow up with a lot of money. We were on the sort of opposite side of town. Ivana's, you know, father's like this amazing, uh, he's like the top anesthesiologist in, you know, Fresno. And she lived, uh, she knew a lot of these kids. They, they worked together and played together and sang and danced together at the local community theater. But I had a sixth grade teacher who actually filled out my application to get me to the talent school on the other side of town. So it was so scary for me, um, you know, to all of a sudden be thrusted into a different sort of socioeconomic and just, you know, just a different world. I was basically like in the hood, you know? So, um, so she just like, yeah, embraced me with open arms. And, and that was like, first week. So all of my fears were curbed and yeah. And the rest is history. We've been friends ever since. So it's been, yeah. And then in the, in the early nineties, you yeah. Rebecca and Ivana are in New York for their modeling careers and yeah. you become roommates. Yeah. yeah. I think I probably did to Ivana what Ivana did to Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Ivana was like, Oh my 
God, who is this beautiful creature? She's mine. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing though, Rebecca, remember like, cause we we were always on time. We were like the only models. Yeah, that this were is how we met. Time. Yeah. So we would always be on time to every casting call, actually early. So we'd be 15 minutes early, no on one's the there. Waiting for the door. And I'd be like, oh my God, that girl's here too. Like I'm usually the only one waiting. So every, like this happened like for a week and we were just like. <laughs> Fine, it's meant Let's to wait be. on the stoop together. Let's look yeah. hot on the stoop <laughs> together. That's exactly what time. happened. <laughs> it's, it's true. I would come down the street and I'd see her sitting there. I'd be like, oh, I'm glad I'm not the first one. <laughs> like, and the two of us would sit there and wait until the they would open up the casting and literally this happened like several times a day sometimes because we had the same go -sees. I think they're called go -sees, right? They were. I don't know if they are now. That just took In the 90s they were. <laughs> and what, what does that mean? Somebody's, you're, somebody's seeing you, right? So we as models would go see a client and try to get a job along with like a thousand other girls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I remember, so, so we met each other then, and then I needed a place to stay. And Rebecca's uh, Rebecca had an extra space. I wouldn't call it a room because it was a one bedroom, but the, <laughs> the agency was like, you know, put us, basically put us together. And then Rebecca well, was living on the, can I just say this? Yes. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. I mean, honestly, I was scared for her because she lived on the first floor apartment on oh. St. Mark's Place where anybody could oh, wow. open her window. Yeah, yeah you remember, I mean, like right on the top of Alphabet City when you That's did- That's right. And I was Not like, in the early 90s. Uh -uh. Right. <laughs> I know. It hadn't been cleaned up yet. So no. I was like, we got to get this girl out of this place. She got to live. Like, yeah. So- Ivana, <laughs> you were in New York because you won the 17 contest? Correct. Yeah. So I was living in Fresno and then I won. I didn't win it. We I got one of the eight national finalists and they brought yeah. all of us to New York. And um, and then that's when I met my agency. And then then after I graduated, I came back from yeah. high school. And Rebecca, was you and Ivana being roommates before Nagzima? So we were roommates during when I got the job for Nagzima. Yeah, we had, I think, maybe been living together for about a year. I'm sure I helped you with the audition. Oh, definitely. <laughs> I do remember, the reason I remember that it was, that we were together by then, Ivana, is because uh, Jared Leto, actually, who was also in the Nagzima commercials, yep. lived in the same building downstairs. And we had this window that was stuck all the time. We couldn't get it to open or close. So we would go down and ask him and his cute roommates to come up and like fix the window for us. That is so funny because I just rewatched it to remember oh my God. on YouTube, but I did not notice Jared Leto. I'm going to have to watch that again. So yeah. He's the boy that I, you know, fall in love with in the commercial. That's so funny. Yeah. Uh, did you have any idea that that commercial would, you know, change your life? No. I mean, I thought it would like give me some money so I could pay my rent and eat, but. It was good money. Um, yeah. We good were money. broke back then. Um, so I was super excited about the commercial, but I didn't know it was going to be like, my nickname for the rest of my life. Oh my girl. <laughs> like stamped on your forehead. I know. Yeah, totally. Well, <laughs> maybe the money, you know, made up for the name. <laughs> um, yeah, at this point, I take it all. Bring it up. I up. was thinking, like, do you, uh, is Noxima even still around? Like, I don't think I see commercials for that or don't recognize them like you did back then. Um, I think Probably so. Maybe. I mean, I think the company is around. I'm not sure you know, what kind of advertising they do. I think they should do an older person like campaign and- And bring you back. Bring you back. Yeah. Right. Smart. Can yeah. you imagine? <laughs> that... the, the Noxzema girl turns 50. <laughs> <laughs> that, I mean, there's so much, you know, on, you know, nostalgia on TV, you know. They're really, okay. it would be a great idea. Yeah, it would be really- if there's an advertiser paying attention, it's a really smart idea. <laughs> so let's go back. Sharon, do you remember your audition for Guiding Light? I do, I do, yes. Um, so I was in Arizona on a tour of uh, Little Shop of Horrors and uh, mm -hmm. this audition came through and my agents were like, oh, it's okay, honey, you're, you're, you're away. I remember leaving 
in the middle of the rehearsal thing because I was like, I got to get this. I just have a feeling about this and flying there uh, and auditioning. Ivana, do you remember who the older woman that we used to work in the office that sort of was the head of everything? Um, mm. I read for her initially. I can't remember. And it's been ages, but... Um, it, it, you read for... Uh, so Glenn okay. Daniels was probably the casting director, was okay. he? I think Glenn so. Dan An older woman, very like... Betty Ray wasn't there. At yeah, I think so. Ever. It was like the... Was she still the there? Mark of the whole... Yes, yes. Like, yeah, she oh, wow. Me. You were... Because so when I... I, I with me too. Oh, yeah? Okay, so... i sure. I went in for her and read for her. Oh, and wow. she brought me back for the screen test where, where they pick like the four girls and you actually get dressed up and you actually do the scene and remember that and and everyone could see your audition in the oh movie. yeah everybody. we Monica always watched so yeah. be watching and it's so crazy. crazy we yeah. always watched who did you screen test with kevin mambo you did yeah Great. so uh and i had to sing and i had to do a couple scenes and um but i remember loving it because you know uh for me anyway i liked getting in the cost like just doing it made it easier if that makes sense you know sometimes when you're yeah. rehearsing you're auditioning sometimes it's hard to just go that extra so i remember actually enjoying the process because i felt like oh i'm really i'm on the show i'm on the set i'm you know i'm dressed <laughs> up you know, the real guy and it's like you know um but and that but i got that yeah i got it so it was really exciting and i'd never done anything you know i hadn't done a commercial or any television and great boot camp if you want to do tv and act and right. a great yeah. place to start for sure yeah very lucky. And that was your first tv fun. role right mhm mm yeah. yeah and everybody so, yeah. right or yeah besides commercials i mean you guys had done commercials and stuff but this was our first yeah yeah days yeah. of our lives actually for me was my first tv Role. Okay. Mine was loving. Oh, yeah. yeah. What do you remember that, about yours? Little tiny show. It was like a shorter, it was like a version on ABC, I feel like, right? It was yeah. 30 minutes. Yeah. 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 It was like a small version of like the big ABC show. It was so good. I watched it. It was good. Yeah. I watched that whole lineup on that particular so think, yeah, all my children general hospital one life to live loving i mean the whole ryan's hope was the oh one my gosh. That, <laughs> all yeah, of them the days of our lives the bow and hope storyline that was life so good <laughs> <laughs> oh so you were a fan ivana were you a daytime fan um only because my two best friends were on it you know what i mean like i i didn't really watch it my parents didn't let me watch it when i was younger um, but then, you know, once once Rebecca got on Loving, I was like addicted, completely addicted. And Rebecca, you worked with uh, Laura Wright, right? Yeah. And and Paul, Paul Anthony Stewart. Stewart. Yes, I love Paul. I mean, me Laura, too. Laura, me wow. too. I think of I Paul love Paul. I, I get little yeah. pumps. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's he's good. Uh, that's so that's so awesome. What do you remember about your auditioning for that and getting getting that part for the first time? Well, I mean, I, it was kind of like Sharon. It was my first real audition for like a show, and I was so excited. My manager, I didn't have anything to wear. I'd never done a screen test or a callback or a you know whatever it was, and so we went and we bought this Laura Ashley dress. <laughs> <laughs> Or lavender, I should say, and it's got polka dots on it. Yeah, I, I the dress. you still I, have it. I kept the dress. It was, like, it was like my lucky dress, my audition dress, because I got my first acting role with that dress. So I, I have it, and it's really tiny. I'm going to give it to my daughters. <laughs> okay. Speaking of lucky dresses, Rebecca loaned me the dress that I wore for my Dream Girls audition. It was a no what. Yeah. And uh, and I didn't want to give it back because I was like, this is a lucky dress. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever give it back? I might need that luck now. It was like a tight, like beautiful, really simple magenta like colored dress. And I wore that and she, she loaned it to me. That just made me I the same you dress. We were getting that part. There was like so many positive vibes thrown in there, right? <laughs> that's so yeah, funny. Yeah, that's, that's totally something you don't ever want to give up. When yeah. you get something, you know, yeah. was that a dream role? Ugh. No pun. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Ivana and I know Ivana and I did a community production of Dream Girls. 
listen to the soundtrack every single day to and from school. We were obsessed with that show. So yeah, I mean, that was like, I couldn't have, uh, and ironically, I played the part she played in the community theater production. Yeah, yeah so. That's um, very well, funny. Yeah, that was, yeah, I felt like I jumped the whole experience, quite honestly, still to this day. <laughs> uh, Ivana and Rebecca, do you remember what you thought when you first saw the film? Oh my God. I mean, I I remember the whole thing about Dreamgirls because that was a big deal. You know what I mean? A really big deal. And we were just over the moon. I think I think I saw it with you, right, Sharon? Didn't we do it in front? Everybody came, yeah, yeah. Okay, I think we all went like with Sharon's mom and all my family. Oh, that's and all. Theater. And Rebecca came to the LA premiere. Yeah, and I was just so was, proud. I was like, it was so huge. I was just like, this is amazing. It, yeah, it really was a dream come true. It really. Well, was. it's so. I mean, the fact that you were in it on stage and then to, you know, yeah, well, and, you and, and one of our. Jobs, right? Like it's yeah. just such an iconic movie and role, and I don't know, it's super exciting. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, girls, I, I miss those days when we used to be all together and going on auditions together and helping dress each other for <laughs> roles and read lines together. I miss that. Those I mean, are the Rebecca, Rebecca and I, like when I first came to LA, I um, so I was in New York first, and then I I. I came to LA, Rebecca, what were you shooting? 90210? No. That was after that, right? I I wish I knew. And and then <laughs> and then she was like, why don't you just come for pilot season? And I was like, okay, I'll 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 come for pilot season. And every single audition, we would read the lines together, practice together. We would drive each other on the audition so we wouldn't have to go by ourselves. Like we were a little bit. Because, wow. you know, also, Ivana, do you remember the Thomas Guide? The yeah. Thomas Guide. We'd have the Thomas Guide, the map, and I would drive Rebecca to hers. She would drive to mine. We would like do our lines in the car, and then afterwards we would just like either celebrate or be like, "Oh my god, that was shit." <laughs> yeah. We were. We had to either be like outside. It was worse waiting outside the door from Ivana's <laughs> audition than doing my own. <laughs> I was like so nervous that she did she like the you remember that one where I fell down the stairs on the way out? I was so nervous after my audition oh, and oh, I oh. I literally fell down. Where was it at Paramount? Yeah, it was yeah on the east side. I that fell down the stairs and the security guard was like he like left his door to to come and I just ran. And then I and then I was running towards the car, and then like some dogs started barking at me, and I just like lost it. I got in the car, and I was like You're crying. It was horrible. <laughs> I haven't heard the the words Thomas Guide in a very long time. I was going to ask if you knew what that was. Yeah. I did because I've been everywhere for work to LA so many times. Yep. So funny. Thank, thank God for Google. Yes, I guess. But you know, nobody knows where they're going really now. Cause they didn't have to learn the grid. You know That's what I mean? Sure. Yeah. There's, we're so dependent on the, the nav system. Oh yeah. my gosh. Now I'm thinking of another thing. I feel now I'm convinced that Rebecca's like my lucky charm because <laughs> now I don't know if you remember Rebecca, this just came to me, but we were having our coffee in Hollywood uh -huh. and they were auditioning for Boston public. And you're like, have you been out on Boston public? They're seeing a lot of black girls, girls your type. And I was like, no, I've never even heard of that. She said, call your agent right now. And I called my agent and my agent was just like, Sharon, you're too young for it. We know what this is, but you're not right for this part. And I'm like, no, I, my friend said that everybody's going out on it and I want to go out on it. So they got me an appointment but they didn't send my resume or my picture or anything. And I booked that like that day. And oh my like, God. Had I not had coffee. <laughs> I loved, I, I totally remember that now that you remember. Up. I yeah. do because we used to do that for each other. Yeah. Remember? Look we out for each know. other. And if they, we heard about a role or yeah, for sure. That's right. Like you would call up and say, Rebecca, mm -hmm. there's this thing in this, you know, same. And we would just tell each other about roles. Yeah. Yeah. We thought they should be going on. Yeah. But well, literally, if I didn't have coffee with you, it wouldn't have been. That is a perfect segue. We need to have coffee. That <laughs> yeah. is a perfect segue into Women's History Month. Because this is sisterhood right here. The yeah. three of you looking out for each other. 
who are some, uh, you know, women in your lives that, or, or, or role models that have just played an important role for you, you know, when we're talking about Women's History Month? Well, I, I mean, you know first of all. okay, I'll go, I'll go. I mean, you know, I'm very close to my family and um, my mom is definitely one of my role models. And then I have six sisters and then I have amazing female friends that are just like my ride or die, like literally have carried me <laughs> from, you know, every situation like ever thought of. And, you know, I just think about when Mar my youngest had cancer and, and, you know, just the, the bond that was formed with my friends that came together and were like, you know, we got you, we got you. And, and I think my, you know, my, the people that I look up to the most are really the people that I know and that I, and that I, have created around me. I really made it happen. I mean, I'm like, yeah, you're, you're staying here. You're staying here so that we can, you know, have growth together. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. Sharon. Yeah. I think very similar. My tribe is really my friends, the people, I mean, I've been lucky enough to know the women in my life for many, many years, which I, the more I talk to other people, I realize that that's rare that, you know, that you have a bond that has started, you know, 20, 20, 25 years ago, you know, I met some of these women. So that's always sort of stayed intact. And then I guess through the business, there were a couple of people, if I had to name maybe a couple of directors or, you know, female black, um, Nima Barnett is somebody who directs and Tasha Smith is now directing, like that kind of helped me with the trajectory or the way I should look at sort of how I do my business and, you know, but are also friends, but who I trust and, you know, ask advice, I guess, professional <laughs> advice, but I've always sort of had my female tribe in intact for very very long time yeah yeah i mean i think it's a similar answer to mm -hmm. these ladies like it starts with my family my grandmothers and my mom they were all incredibly strong female role models for me um and then these girls you're looking at them, <laughs> you know and just the continuation of like like my the people i've picked up along the way that has formed my tribe and there's many of them but you know, I, I'm so grateful for, and I actually really miss, um, I want to spend more time with my friends now. COVID has been hard just because, you know, I sometimes can disappear anyway and get caught up in my own life with my kids and my this and that. And it's easy to just not call or not reach out. COVID really did that to me. Uh, so I'm hoping to reconnect with my tribe this year. God willing, I, I couldn't agree. I could not agree more. Um, Ivana, you said you had watched Sharon on Guiding Light. Did you remember watching and, and you know, oh, those yeah. people before you even knew who they were? I definitely knew everybody because of, because of watching Sharon. So, um, yeah, I kind of felt like I was, you know, coming in to the family at that point. I, re I remember everybody. So it was really comforting. It was in a really call? nice cast, really nice place to work, right? Yeah. Did you call Sharon for advice when you got the part? Oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And I'm sure I called her for the audition as well. Uh, and, you know, she was just like, it's such a cool cast. It's, you know, the that soap in particular, I mean, I don't know about actually the other ones, but the cast was really tight and like, hardworking and no real divas. So it was really, it was and a good a special place because it's the oldest television show, right? Uh, yeah. Ever. Historically, yeah. it, was, uh, it was on the radio. So it's yeah. the oldest television show. It began on the radio it's and then on the radio. Yes. Yeah. It did. Yeah. Wow. 1937. <laughs> it's crazy. I did not know that. That's and, and they did radio and TV for a number of years. So right. The cast of the radio would run and go do the TV show. It, it was That's crazy. Incredible. It was wild. Yeah. And, it was, and it was live at one point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was like yeah. a shot in front of a live audience? Oh Not in, no, just live in front of the crew. Like you used know. to do the olds like in the microphone and just read and you would just listen. It was right. like that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Isn't that, it's so crazy. But That's I feel crazy. like that, that history or that energy, there, it just feels like a, it's different there. Something's. Yeah. Yeah, 
Well, and then you had Kevin Mambo on one side and Tay Diggs on the other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just saw Tay last week. I just ran into him. He's out here shooting something, but I saw him uh, on Ventura. It was so, yeah, we were kind of like laughing about the uh, Guiding Light days. Although- I, I ran into him in an airport and was talking to him about Guiding Light. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. it made me think of Tammy Blanchard. Yeah. Because when she came on and when she came on, I think she was from like Jersey and she was like, she was so green. I, Sharon, she still lives there in Bayonne. No, she's she, doing the okay. show, she's doing the show know. next Thursday with, oh, wow. Pat, with Patty Darbinville, who oh, played her mom. Told her I said hi. I don't know if she remembers oh, me. But I just I remember her, like never doing anything, but us knowing that like she had this natural ability and she was just stunning. And, and then, you know. Well, you know, what's so interesting is she played Judy Garland. In, but in high school. Oh, in high school. Like you two wow. doing dream girls. Meant to be, yeah. Meant to be. Uh, Tammy and as Judy Garland, the young Judy Garland. Oh, yeah. um, I don't know if you guys saw that, but it was pretty. Me and my shadow. Uh, it was, I think it called Me and My Shadows. It was amazing. Yeah. Sharon, yeah. while we're talking still dream girls, one of our fans was asking, can you share, you know, working with Beyonce, Anika Noni Rose, Jennifer Hudson? Yeah. Oh my gosh. It was just an amazing experience. Build the tea, girlfriend. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> she says, build the tea. Um, <laughs> I, they were just so, well, I was just so struck by their talent, the immense talent. Like I remember being in this little rehearsal room at LA Center Studios and waiting for Beyonce to come through when we were learning our harmonies and we were at the piano and I'm just like, oh my God, Beyonce's gonna walk, like she's just gonna walk through the door and I'm just gonna have to keep it together and it's fine. <laughs> and so it was, well, I was like, me just acting like everything was normal was the hardest thing in the world. And so, you know, and, and I remember her coming in, I remember exactly what she smelled like, like she just smelled delicious. And, her <laughs> and she was just like, hey, I'm here and I was just like, you know, and um, and then we rehearsed, and she couldn't have been kinder. Just so sweet, and um, and then Jennifer had to sing her song, and literally the walls were shaking. Like I was just like, oh, I think this movie's gonna be great. Like, you know, like the walls were just like, like vibrating, and um, yeah, and just the rehearsal, just so much fun. Like you know, learning the dances, and but I was just really struck by. Uh, Beyonce's kindness and her professionalism. You know, it's like if I weren't a Beyonce fan prior to that, just watching that woman work and her her um, commitment. And like, I remember her flying out for one of the Kennedy, like doing the Tina Turner thing for the Kennedy Lincoln Center thing. And then coming back the next day, I mean, she was just jet setting and she worked so hard. And then when we finally got to the, the recording studio, I think she did her song in like two takes like just, just flawless you know just sounds exactly like she sounds when you put the you know put her on it's like she's just an immense talent and a beautiful spirit right so and then um when we started doing the recording and like sitting down i was sitting down and eddie murphy just comes and plops down and just like, ah. oh, my god. It's like oh my god <laughs> you know it's just it was just a, a lot, lot of a lot of pinching yeah. yourself during yeah, that, a lot, of that experience. Yeah. a lot of like running to the bathroom going, you got this, just calm down. Freak <laughs> someone out. Get it together. You oh, know? Trust me, I would have been peeing right there if I if if I knew Beyonce was just about to walk in the room, like to work with, you know. <laughs> Always like the he whole definitely whole loves some experience loves some clean like that. I mean, that yeah. is an amazing set. What a fun yeah. It really you was. all that talent, all that. It's just like so exciting. Yeah. And then well, you just as an actor to watch all that talent in one place yeah. is like a learning, you know, explosion. It really, it really is. And then also it was a, you know, it was a musical. It was just like, I'm the cheesiest like musical theater geek. Like I was in heaven, you know, like like singing and dancing and do, and, and the musical that I loved the most growing up, you know. So it was it was like larger than life, like best experience ever. And the costumes, oh, yeah. the costumes were just incredible. Yeah. Do you each one of those dream, dream moments? What's that? No, I was just I was just saying that's one of those dreams. Yeah, dream really dream moments. Mm -hmm. You know, for real. Like, I mean, it doesn't sound like it could have gotten any better. And like it was exactly. your dress. And it was your dress. <laughs> 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 These little part of it. 
Yeah, it was Rebecca, your dress. Rebecca is the one that like had the full on closet and she still does now. So we would just like basically shop in her closet. So yeah. anything we needed, it was there. She was with the style, we knew she was the yeah. marker for all of that stuff, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And she was like, oh, no, that's that's not I absolutely, still yeah. do not feel like I get I deserve that title, but I wore that. You do have you always been that way with clothes? Yeah. She yeah, just yeah. really, she has impeccable taste. She just has great taste. She, you yeah. always have. I don't yeah. know. I mean, I like out, even when we were like teenagers, like she would have the outfits, like she'd put me in the really? tiny leather shorts and I'm like, are you sure? And she's like, yep. And then you come home, it's always just like, you know, right out of El Decor. Like she just has the oh eye. God. Okay. You guys need to talk to my daughters because <laughs> I am like, the most uncool, uncool. That it's not true. You can't go by your daughters. My my daughter will walk in here and just be like, "Oh my god, mom!" Yeah, my yeah. son's always like, "Mom, stop! You're just it, you're yeah. embarrassing. You're embarrassing me for the hundredth time." <laughs> I tried to give Billy a Vans raincoat this morning. It was so cute. It was like a pullover hoodie, and it had like it was color blocked, like lime green, pink, and navy. She was like. I was like, <laughs> this is so cute. You need a raincoat, dude. <laughs> Speaking of your children, are any of them following in mom's footsteps? Hi. Right. Right. Yeah. Kai, right, Sharon? Oh, Kai. Kai wants to act for sure. Yeah. I mean, oh, it just happened very like last year. Yeah, he was always like, it was always like, I want to go into law. I think I cried when he said he wanted to go into law. I was like, yeah. <laughs> you know, then, but then, um, but then, yeah, now he's, he's been bit, you know, so, and he um, just did like a podcast, uh, like a little, um, COVID it was called quarantined, you know, clever, uh, with teenagers, you know, quarantine, he did that and had to audition for it and, and got that. And so, but you know, obviously everything's shut down right now, but yeah, he's definitely interested and he's really good. He's yeah. He's got a natural talent. Sure. Just that little like audition. And I was like, Oh my gosh, he's yeah. really good. Yeah. Yes. He's good. Yeah. He's he's good. Good. Has told me how talented he is so many times. I oh, can't wait to see. You know, it's been a little while since I've seen Kai. Yes, I know. Yeah. I know. I mean, yeah. I and their, their kids are my god kids. So I love that. Oh, so really? I just, I still remember babysitting them. Do you remember that? Yeah. yeah. I remember you guys taking him to the Grove and yeah. Did you uh, see that movie yeah. that was? Too scary for him. Polar Express. Remember oh, the Tom Hanks movie? And he started crying in the beginning, and I was like, "Oh my god, we got to get out of here." Oh my god, I've, tra I've traumatized Sharon's son. <laughs> yeah, no, we 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 fixed it. We fixed it, and I, well, I, I want to yeah. remind everybody, you know, changelives.org. You know, donate whatever you can to Chrysalis. Um, the Thank YouTube you. link is up. Um, Rebecca, please, what do you remember about your audition for 90210? Yes. And, you, and you joined in the sixth season, so you knew what a, you know, um, hit you were coming into. You know, interestingly enough, that I did not have to audition for that role. Awesome. Um, I don't know why, really. I think so at the time. It was, it was Noxima. I think what happened, maybe. Really? I'm serious, yeah. Well, Larry Taub happened to be Luke Perry's agent and my agent. And so Larry, um, I guess, sold Luke on me. And Luke had final say of whoever was going to play that role. Because it was a, you know, come in, do it, and, it, you know, leave. It was like nine episodes or something. Um, so I didn't have to audition, but I will tell you that was a very frightening set to walk onto. Um, but I, yeah. Be, because they had all been together for so long. Yeah. Just cause they were notorious, you know, for many things. And <laughs> I was just nervous. I'd never, you know, walking onto that set was nervous. Rare. I'm not, <laughs> a lot of rare, um, <laughs> But luckily, what ended up happening was that the boys on that set were so awesome that it balanced out any cattiness that was going on. And, you know, to be perfectly fair, everyone was so young, right? They were young. And those 
those guys had been famous. They Shot been, out of a cannon. Yes. Rolling Stone magazine. I mean, they had like a level of fame that I can't even comprehend. So, you know, let's let's just like, you know, put that, put it into context, I guess. So they were super famous and crazy and it was crazy. There was some stuff, but at the end of the day, um, I just feel so blessed that I got to meet Luke and he became a very dear friend. Um, mm. I got to work with him after that show and I miss oh, him and I'm going to cry. I'm incredibly cry. sorry for your loss. That um, is so young for somebody to... It's, to yeah, it's very sad. Yeah. I, I feel this one hardcore. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm, I'm sure. And then you get to work with Quentin Tarantino. That was scary. <laughs> <laughs> that was scary. It was, it was, look, at the end of the day, I was like, fuck it. Oh, can I say that? Sorry. You can. I, we don't have a censor. <laughs> I was like, Quentin, grab it, bring it on. Just bring yeah. those, the, just bring it on. I'm here. I'm just going to do the best I can. Like, Let's do this. And it was so much fun. Um, you know, I got to spend a couple of days stranded on a boat with, Quentin and Brad Pitt. I mean, that's dreamy. Every every rough, rough gal you are. Poor, poor, poor Rebecca. <laughs> I know, I know. I had no trouble saying goodbye to my kids that day. She was in a bikini at almost 50 and looking like mm -hmm. fly as hell. Oh, that was hard. Fly as hell. Well, thank you. I don't know about that, but <laughs> Girl, that made me have that. Some that can give you nerves. Never mind, Brad, or you know. I know when it when we did the fitting and it was a bikini. I was like, oh my god, what have I gotten myself into? But it was like it was perfect. It was like very impressive. And I think the shot. Like, give me a wrap, please. Was like, <laughs> on my ass. I was like, well, so she did that. That worked. Yep. Yep, your ass was being talked about. Let me just tell you. They're like, oh, this is so cute. I'm like, I know. It's, the, it, it's, oh, I'm not going to go there. I'm just going to say thank you because I want to stuff that's being said that's in my That's right. Head. Just say thank you. Just, just say thank you. Ivana. There you go. Well, Ivana, um, one of our fans, Jacarius, was asking, what prompted you to become a beekeeper? And let's talk about Lomar and uh, the discount you have going for Women's History Month. Yes. Um, well, I was living in the city and we decided that we wanted to move outside of the city just for a better life for the kids. And um, wait, I want to I'm going to interrupt for one second. Sharon and Rebecca, were you shocked when you heard she was a beekeeper? <laughs> I was and I wasn't because I'm like, of course, she's doing something amazingly <laughs> wonderful for the environment. And I don't know. We've always had this sort of farm feeling like they've always lived on properties with there's trees and it kind of made sense. I didn't, yeah. I didn't I couldn't believe that she was not going to be afraid of the bees and she was actually going to get in there and right. like, that's yeah, you know, I was afraid. I was yeah. shocked to be perfectly honest. I really was. And you know, I know, yeah, I mean, you, you, you were raised <laughs> on a big piece of property as a kid and stuff, but I never really, you know, you don't like bugs. Especially a lot of them going in your ears. No, I know. I didn't. I, I, I am shocked that I'm a beekeeper. Like, <laughs> that, that should have been the question. <laughs> you know, listen, they both have been to this property. And so they've seen like, oh, this reminds me of, you know, kind of growing up. Like we did have a lot of land. But for, for, for me, we wanted gardens. And I had just seen this... Um, this documentary called More Than Honey. And it was all about like the decline of the bee population. And I was, you know, I was like, Brett, maybe we should, maybe we should do this. I mean, maybe we can help out in some way. Cause I know that the bee, the backyard beekeeper is really what's helping the population. So that's where it started. And then it just became an obsession. I mean, you have no idea like how obsessed I am with bees in general, what they provide for us. I mean, the beeswax itself is, you know, when you melt it, it can purify the air. The honey is anti antibacterial, antimicrobial. It's great for your sore throat. Even the venom 
can is good for arthritis. Some people use it to help with cancer. It's just wow. like they're they're literally. I feel like they're like God's little gifts to humans. So I started Lomar Farms, which is um, uh, I make beeswax candles, and we have honey, and pretty much like you know some organic soap. Everything that I kind of love that that we use here, I, I'm like let's sell, and. Um, and I started off with just like sending it to my friends, you know what I mean? And they were like, this is really good, Ivana. Like, this is good stuff. So, um, and, and then it just became, it blew up really since since COVID. It's this last year, we've increased like 550%. So we've had to like wow. get this property next door. Yeah, it's it's, Bravo. it's actually pretty amazing. I'm and coming up, I'm coming up soon after my second vaccine. <laughs> you you got to come up. You got to come up. Yeah, and and right now we have um fifteen percent off of our store if you put in Queen fifteen. So um so if you go to our website and and Queen fifteen, we have our our little. I'm gonna put that up. Okay. Yeah, and I always have her candles around because it's just such a comforting. Sm it reminds me of her the smell, and I just I mean I'm always stocking up. They're so so good, and now I don't know how to exist without that scent in my home. Like this is like. <laughs> Same. You don't have to. I need more. Yeah, no, I feel the same as you. I I have all the candles, the body oil. The I mean, my kids are now. They have a very special relationship with bees because of Ivana. Mm -hmm. um, oh, sorry. <laughs> You're busy. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, Did you just get at the front door? Ivana and Sharon, you both went to like performing arts schools, but. Where, you know, who or what influenced your desire to, you know, follow that path? And the same for Rebecca, like acting, where did, where did that come from? Was it just attending those schools or you, you always, since you were, you know, Sharon, yeah, if you want to. I mean, oh, go ahead. okay. Um, I think just for me, you know, we, we do come from like a very like theatrical musical family. We we're always putting on shows when we were younger like me and my sisters, I would, I would choreograph them and, and, you know, we'd just come out and literally, I feel like it was every night we'd make our parents like sit on the couch and watch the show. Do you remember that Sharon? You, I'm sure you were still around when I was still doing that. Or at least the kids were doing that. Always. And so, so that has always been in sort of in my DNA. It's in my, with wow. my mom as well. And then, you know, couple that with, with going to the, you know, the, the performing arts schools and being in the theater and that, that really, it's always been about the arts for me in that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For me, I think uh, my childhood wasn't the best and the light, the light in my life was always performing. It just was my happy place from as far back as I can remember. It's just been something that has brought me so much happiness. And so I think I, I, I searched for it always, you know, I always wanted to sing. I always, I was very inspired by, you know, Judy Garland and Lena Horne and Tina Turner and Diana Ross. And I mean, Michael Jackson, I used to cry when he would just like Pepsi commercial. I'd be like crying. Like I just was like so in love with the arts and, and pursued it with everything, you know, I was from as far back as I can remember. So, yeah. And for you, Rebecca? Yeah. You know, for me, I I don't know exactly what what it was, but it was the same. I I do I remember Sissy Spacek made a very big impression on me because um, coal miner's daughter. I I got to see the coal miner's daughter, and the reason I was allowed to watch that movie because uh, was because some of it was shot in the region that I'm from in Kentucky and Appalachia, and um, hmm. I don't know. I just you know I was always. I was the middle child, so I had a lot of time to create my own world and use my imagination and play pretend because, you know, I was I was sort of alone a lot, even though I had a big family. And yeah, I just from as far back as I can remember, just I was always dressing up and doing performances and doing shows and just performing, you know, in some way or another. And, and Rebecca left... Kentucky when she was 15. 
Shh, wow. we're keeping that a secret because my daughter. <laughs> I just told my daughter that I did not graduate from college. I literally did, and they're like seventeen and eighteen. I was like, I'm going to have to tell them one day. No, when do I? They didn't know. No, I was like, I went to UC Berkeley. I went to UC Berkeley, which I did, but I only uh -huh. went for two years, and then I remember telling them, and they were like, Oh my, oh. My. <laughs> Wow, I love I know. that. The, the secrets we want to keep from our kids, but we're not able to. I'm so worried about telling Billy because she's already talking about she wants to go to Japan. She wants to, she's mm. taking Japanese and learning to speak to like her mama. Oh. And did she you go, like, where did you go at 15? Uh, New York City. I left, I left Kentucky and went to New York, and I just felt like it was time to get started. I mean, that. <laughs> I can't even imagine it. You know, I I lived across the river in New Jersey and, you know, my friend used to sneak out of his, you know, parents' house out of the bedroom window and go into the city. And that, already, you know, I was always impressed, like how brave he was to do that at 15 or 16. Or and then I, you know, started working there at 18 for the next 35 years. But like at 15 just seemed so... Yeah, I mean, I would lose my mind if my daughters did anything <laughs> You know, yeah, but you know, I think it's a better play to some degree. I find it's probably safer today somewhat, I think, than it might have been back then. I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think I don't so. Know. I, but I, this might be the mother in me talking. And also, I'm <laughs> a very well, let's make, girl. <laughs> let's make sure she doesn't <laughs> see, see this. <laughs> Um, Ivana, before we go, we also have to talk about your sister, Anita. She's got a book coming out. Yes. Is yes. this her first? My little sister. It's her first being published, you know, with a big, with Simon and Schuster. And so she self-published a couple books. She's got a lot of stories, this one. And this one is about 10 years old. She has another one that's 20 years old that's going to be coming out as well. But um, yes, it's called... Um, Shallow Waters, and it's available now actually for pre-order, but it doesn't come out until August. And it is just an amazing story about um, a black mermaid. And I don't want to give away too much because it's oh, wow. you think like, oh, a little black. It's a pretty deep storyline where you know she's she it gets captured and has to sort of go through the diaspora of coming from Africa following her love that she falls in love with to America and going through like the whole experience of this, of slave trade and all that. So it's. And, and Can I read this to the kids? Oh yeah. Okay, good. Is it a kid's book? That's what I was going to. So she started off as a young adult and, and when her publishers saw it, they were like, this is way too good to like categorize as young adult, but because it was that like anyone can read it. I mean, I love that because, you know, you think of the impact The Little Mermaid had wow. and for, for young black women, the, here's a story about a black mermaid. Exactly. Exactly. That's powerful. Absolutely. You know? I'm wow. very excited for her and, and couldn't be more happy. I mean, she used to come come home or I used to go over there and she would just like read a passage like, is this okay? And I would just literally be like, just tears would be streaming every time. I'm like, I'm not going to cry this time. Go ahead. And it would just, just stream. It's just so, it's it's amazing. It's a, it's a beautiful story. That's amazing. I cannot Sh wait to get my hands on that. Yeah. yeah. Sharon, Boston Public, you, you talked about Rebecca's involvement in getting it, but what was your experience like? Oh, it was great. It was, that was a really cool, it was my first, um, uh, yeah, when I moved to LA, that was like my first pilot season, and that was a really cool cast, right? Loretta Devine, Shia McBride, Anthony Heald, uh, later like Michael Rappaport, and I was just and and David E. Kelly, who was like hotter than everything at that time with Ally McBeal and The Practice. Yeah, so, wasn't that the first show right after Ally? I was, think so. Like it, it, the Practice might have been going on. I, I can't. Okay. I, or at least very close, but yeah, Ali coming off of the success of Ali McBeal. And what was great about that is again, you know, I think for me, because I always thought I just wanted to do musical theater, 
Um, what's been great is that I haven't really had to abandon music, you know. So when I got Boston Public, I played the music teacher. So we sang, and you know, Loretta coming from her, I mean, Loretta's the an original dream girl on Broadway, right? And can sing like nobody's business. And so we did a lot of singing with Sheeta Jones. Um, uh, so I loved that, you know, it was just a lot of fun. And also um, my first year in Los Angeles. So, you know, having a job here and, and that was a cool show. It was very socially responsible and kind of shedding light on the public school system. And uh, yeah, it was fun. It was four years, great experience. Yeah. That's just amazing. four years on like the biggest TV show on yeah. air. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was very fun, yeah. It was, a, you know, at that time. Um, it's Shallow Waters, right? Available on Amazon. Yeah, um, Shallow so, Waters some, some by the, Anita Kopach. Yeah, some of the fans were asking. Okay. Um, Sharon, do you have a favorite song you sang on Guiding Light? Do you remember what you sang? Um, I think I sang, uh, when Ta on Tay's storyline, I got to sing Stevie Wonder, Sign, Seal, and Deliver. We did like a, a version of that. Because yeah. before, I think, you know, I played like this, I, th I think I played a 16-year-old. I lost my virginity on the show. And I also- um, To who? Was it to Kevin? A child that Frank and- um, Remember, I came in, my mother was like a prostitute or something, yeah. and then she left <laughs> me with Frank, the cop, and they took care of me. And, you know, so I was singing in the park a lot, like, you know, singing gospel hymns in the park. So I think by the time I got to actually sing like a regular song, I was just stoked because, you know, I was, yeah, I was singing like Eye of the Sparrow and Motherless Child. And, you know, it was just very like, you know, kind of heavy. So but, I think you sang someone to watch over me too. For oh yeah, that was a good one for one of the big yeah, um, yeah. parties. Oh. It was a 60th anniversary, I think. Yeah, I remember that. Do you yeah. each have a? I know uh, Sharon. You said Dreamgirls favorite musical, Ivana. Hmm. So I definitely would have Dreamgirls as one of my favorite musicals for sure. Um, hmm. Yeah, I, I think I think Dream I'm gonna have to say Dream Girls. Yeah, Dream Girls. Yeah. I mean we like Sharon it's said not like, Sharon's in it. It's 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 yeah. a proper it, yeah. musical. And we it's played that soundtrack for I mean years and years and years and years. Like I we knew like every breath that everybody took. It wasn't just like the notes, but like the breath in between the notes. So it was yeah. just yeah, it was one of those things. Well, another show you were in isn't so bad, Sharon. Rent. Oh yeah. Oh, I God. I love oh, Rent. I love. Uh, yeah. I mean, I love Dream Girls. That movie is, you know, I love that yeah. soundtrack. Yeah. But I also can listen to the Rent soundtrack. Yeah. You know, I think we went with your dad to see yeah. Sharon. To see Rent. Sharon. That's yeah. right. And you know what? If you haven't seen Sharon do this Rent song, you need to like. Is it on YouTube, Sharon? I have no oh. idea. Oh, so, I'm gonna look. You gotta look on YouTube. Oh, I'm gonna look the minute we're off. I'm no, gonna look. No, it's so killer. It's just like I mean, my jaw like was on the floor the whole time. I could not. I I couldn't believe it. I was like, awesome. wait, wait. And you left wait. Guiding Light to to get rent. I wow. did. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think I was doing, oh my gosh, Guiding Light was great because, you know, on Broadway, they do these, I probably shouldn't say this, no, but they but they do these like put in rehearsals that you, you have to show up and do these rehearsals. And because I was on Guiding Light, I never had to do them. I could always just come in. Like, oh, I'm busy with, with the show. I can't, oh, I can't <laughs> rehearsal, you know. So it was just like a great thing because it, yeah, it buffered kind of the heavy and, duty work of, you know. And doing you know, both work. is the hard pretty to amazing. Business, no doing doubt. both is Amazing. Yeah. You got to do both at the same time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I loved, I loved you. I loved rent. I loved doing rent. Oh, I'm Ivana, I'm gonna look that up when we're done. Rebecca, you uh got to do Steel Magnolias, right? On Broadway? Yeah, that was a treat. I, I mean so I mean I assume you love the movie. I did love the movie. I'm a good southern girl. That's so, right. so good in it. I did we, you, were you, saw her in that did i saw her but i don't know if we went together to see her yeah, yeah. i mean yeah. i'm pretty sure you guys came about five or ten times <laughs> so good i definitely um, came like about five times i was just you know look that was really scary for me because unlike those two i don't come from a 
you know, theater background or musical background or just being on a, you know, that wasn't my medium, but um, it was fun. I was so happy I got to do that. And it was so great to be in New York at that time with them. And gosh, we just, that those, I so many amazing memories around that time in New York, even though there were some tough things going on, Ivana with Marley um, and but it was all meant to be. I mean, listen, I never would have thought I could, you know, I would leave LA to go to New York to be with my best friends and doing a Broadway show. It was awesome. I remember helping you move into that apartment on the upper, were you Upper West Side or somewhere up there, uptown? Yeah, upper, right? upper West Side. And you really helped me move into that apartment. Like we were literally getting you situated. Yeah. I remember. You guys really helped me because there was nothing in there. I think the first night I slept in that apartment, it was just a mattress. And I used my coat as my blanket and my luggage was there. And then you and Bev helped me get furniture, helped me get everything I needed. You you were there from the beginning and the end of setting up that apartment. Oh, yay. Oh. Crazy. Sharon and Rebecca, do you miss New York? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I yeah. You know, you get older and you just, like Rebecca was talking about, I mean, I do, I, it's very easy for me to hibernate. I mean, when I think of my New York days, I was out every single night. Like, I don't know who that girl was. Like, she was out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that I would, you know, you <laughs> Maybe I did when I was younger, but I do miss, you know, there's nothing like, I mean, right now where it's crazy times, but there's nothing like the theater out there, the art scene, the culture, the vibe, the energy, the restaurants. I mean, there's just no place like it, but, but I've definitely grown to love, you know, I've even moved outside of LA, like I'm way out, you know, I've kind of come full circle. I feel like I'm in a little neighborhood in Fresno now, you know, I'm just like, there's not much going on and I kind of like that, you know, so I, I just kind of get my fix with New York. And it's great because Yvonne has got this beautiful place just 11 minutes from Harlem, um, right? It's about 11 right. minutes outside mm -hmm. of the city, um, which is kind of perfect. And, um, but yeah, I miss it. Yeah. yeah. Your, your, your place outside the city is 11 minutes from the city, basically? Basically, yeah. yeah. And, and wow. now, that, because there's no traffic, like I can get all the way downtown in 20 minutes. I was just gonna say I don't remember it being eleven. Minutes. It's eleven <laughs> minutes now, girl. It's crazy. <laughs> I got to the Soho yeah. in twenty minutes. Wow! Wow! Yeah. That's nice. That, that could means... normally take twenty minutes from just the GW, just alone. <laughs> yes. Or longer. Yes. Or longer. If you catch um, the right window, it's nothing. It really isn't. Yeah. yeah cool. it, it it really is. Um, before we go, is there something you learned about yourself during this pandemic that you would say you didn't know a year ago? That's a good question. Huh. Does anyone else want to go while I think about it? <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, listen, I, I have, my kids laugh at me and just be like, okay, mom, okay, we get it. The, you know, this crisis was great for you. It wasn't great for everyone else. I have thoroughly enjoyed being home like connecting to who i really am like i'm eating really well and just like work you know working on 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 the things i love to do and kind of focusing on like i feel like everything else that was you know not really working for me dropped away because it was like i just got to focus on what i need to do right mm -hmm. like survive first of all and then to thrive so for me i i've for the last year have been focused on that. And so it's been really good. Now I'm like, oh my God, I don't know if I could come out. You know, <laughs> I know it's going to be weird getting out. I'm supposed it to be really you know, going on set next, I think within the next couple of weeks with Law and Order. And I was telling you, Alan, I'm like, I'm, I'm a little nervous because I don't even know how to be around people. So, <laughs> so right now I'm just, I, I'm, I'm kind of like loving the cave that I'm in and, and, yeah, just I learned a lot about business. I learned a lot about Lomar Farms. So yeah, yeah. Don't forget, there's the discount Lomar Farms. Don't forget yes. <laughs> Queen Fifteen. Queen Fifteen. Sharon. Yeah, it's very similar. I think uh, when you can't control things, you realize like, what can I control? I can eat well. I can read. I can. Um, I've gotten a lot more spiritual. Just tapped in. I feel a lot more tapped in a lot more. Um, I'm able to filter out stuff that doesn't serve me. It's more of a priority, I guess. You just sort of 
it's an awakening of, of sorts because you're not going, going, going. You're not on the um, hamster wheel. You know, you're yeah. kind of like, what, what do I care about? Who do I love? What do I want in life? Um, things became really clear. So that's the positive. Yeah. Yeah, my back. experience has been a little different. Um, <laughs> I think it's the kids. <laughs> oh yeah, you got two youngins. Are you are you having to teach as well? Well, to some degree. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, for a year. Except today is their first full day. Well, it's the first full day back for my fifth grader and my third grader. She goes half days now. So oh, amazing. We survived a year of homeschool, and I'm going to tell you, you know, I never want to be a teacher, <laughs> ever. Not a lot more respect, right? I, I, I respect the hell out of teachers. I do. And school. Thank God for school. You know, I look, I'm really happy they're going back. Yeah, yeah that's just me. Bonnie and I have older kids. You know, our kids are her kids are going off to college. Mine's nineteen. So yeah, it's different when you got little ones at home and yeah. you're really like you're yeah. you're stuck with all like, of it. All the things you guys said. That's what I was fantasizing. I was like, oh my god, <laughs> like if I didn't have these kids, I'd be reading books and making kale chips and like. <laughs> Ooh, that sounds but, yummy. That's what ordering it's out and I had a come. at one point. It's like, going to come. It's going to come. You know, like it's, it's intense right now, but like once they get a little older, you'll have more. You have to, you have to make time for yourself. Which is in third grade, you said? She's Georgie is in third grade. Can you believe that? She's they're, not still, they're still super young, you know, like it's, it's, a, it's, a, and you know you're super involved. So, but it was also the flip side of that. It was crazy for us to just be thrown into that. But the flip side was that, you know, um, I would always say if I had more time with my kids, if I had, more, well, guess what? <laughs> you did I had more time with my kids and we did a lot of puzzles and we did every craft you can think of and we cooked together and we became really tight, you know? So it was a good, a bittersweet experience as I'm sure for many other moms. Well, hopefully we're all on the other on, on the other side. One of our fans, Colleen, said she loved you, Rebecca, in Jawbreaker. Aww. And my husband tells me that I desperately need to see that. I watched the open yesterday on YouTube and cracked up. Aww. It was very right. funny. Thank, thank you so much. It, it, I think that movie is like 22 years old or something. Very, very funny. Um, I, you, you were talking about the chips you make. Who Who's the best cook here? <laughs> Not me. Ivana's husband. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know that. My husband. I, no yeah, lie, hands down. I mean, everyone, yeah, it's Brett. We can't even yeah. like pretend You've like- You've always told me that, I forgot, yeah. Yes. Well, I this has been so that. much fun, ladies. Yay. Really, so much fun getting to chat with you all. And everybody watching, please, you know, donate whatever you can to Chrysalis. The link is up on YouTube if you wanna learn more. Or if you're in LA and you want to donate your time, you can do so, changelives.org. Yes, Stay every, safe, everybody. Every dollar counts is what I was going to say. I'll send the picture to Ivana and then she'll share it. Uh, I have your email. I'll send it to everybody. <laughs> well, let, hey, before you before you go, let me make sure it actually, everybody's eyes were open. Okay. Because that, you know, that that is all that is always important. Let's take another one. <laughs> All right, well, here we go. Take another one. One, two, three. Great. <laughs> Thank you so much. Stay safe, everybody. I love you, girls. Love you so much. I'll call you later. <laughs> call you later. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Ivana. Thanks so much for getting everybody together today. It was a blast. Thank you. It was a blast. And uh, I'll see you soon. I'm going to come up there. I really want to. <laughs> okay. Definitely. Okay. Bye. Thanks, everybody, for being here today. I Thank you, Ivana. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you, Sharon and Chrysalis. Uh, you know, donate what you can. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, you can do so right below. Turn on the notifications. And don't forget, tomorrow we have Olivia Diabo, Katie McLean, and Julia Verdon to talk about a really powerful new film, Angie Lost Girls. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>